So, my name is Jan. I'm a co-founder and managing partner of Striber. And I'm going to tell you the story of a very large fuck-up, which is the one of Crony. And I was part of that startup, and I'm going to tell you the story so that you can learn from the mistakes of others, because as the previous speaker said, longevity, you're not going to live long enough to make all the mistakes yourself. So, I'm going to use an image that you all know to lead you through the story, and it's the one of a big, beautiful ship that nobody thought could sink. And uh, if you look closely, you actually see me there, because back in the days, I was a marketing director at Crony, and I described my own job as the guy hanging on the rope on the outside of the Titanic, polishing the tea while the ship was sinking. Now, how did that happen? I'll start at the very beginning. More than 100 years back, Alfred Crony founded the travel agency in Zurich, and he became quickly very successful. He had all the ingredients for a travel agency, such as brochures, and uh, he expanded, and with the um, oncoming jet age in the 1970s and 80s, Crony really flourished. They became the market leader in long-distance travel, and in Switzerland they were iconic. Their um, um, uh, travel hostesses were all around the world, and Crony was all around the world. It became a large multinational group, making billions in revenues and having over 10,000 employees. Even it was a technological leader. The first information age hit travel and uh, some sectors such as banking very early on. So the, it was a company that was uh, driven by and uh, supported by technology, and it was at eyes height with the icons of the day, such as Swiss Air. Now I come to the end, <laughs> which is about um, the year 2015, when Quoni was sold. So around two decades later, you can say that company has failed. It was actually a fire sale. They announced they wanted to sell it without having someone to buy it. So worst possible strategy. So what happened? Within two decades, the company basically vanished. And um, it wasn't such a scandal as the bankruptcy of Swiss Air, because technically Quoni didn't go bankrupt, so it wasn't as much in the media. But on the inside, being on the ship, it felt exactly like that. So what happened? Let's scroll back in time and look at what happened before the ship hit the iceberg. And first, let's look at the iceberg. What was it that destroyed the company? You know that in the early 2000s, uh, things changed, like travel uh, changed. Hotels, airlines went on the internet, and new kinds of intermediaries started to make competition. In the beginning, they were small. And then also something else changed, like these guys, along with this one, like TripAdvisor, that's the first website from the year 2000, changed how people booked travel. For the first time, actually, people could give recommendations, and the travel advisory was done by peers. That changed travel for good. And you see that in the uh, travel online penetration, which was almost neglectable in the beginning of the 2000s and hit about 41% in uh, one decade later. Today, it's way beyond 70% for flight booking. Now, look at what happened with Crony in the same time. It was just the mirror image. The company went down as the internet went up. And so basically, it's a very simple change in the environment. The paradigms changed. The first one, Crony did very well. That was the founder. Uh, establishing service and then operational excellence with mass tourism in the 1970s. But in 2000, for some reason, the company didn't manage anymore to change. So why? And of course, the answer is not in the iceberg, but it's on the ship. So what happened on the ship that they couldn't change? Let's start with denial. What I just so showed you in terms of revenues looks like pretty alarming. But that's not how the revenues looked like officially, because this is organic. You have to calculate that very cumbersomely. What was in the annual reports looked like this. And the difference is uh, acquisitions and some sort of financial wizardry uh, called activation of reserves. So that doesn't look so bad, right? So you can assume that you're actually doing a pretty good job and be confident about the future. The culture failed too. 
And that doesn't mean that culture was bad, but the culture was established from the early 1900s until the 2000s to sell travel the one way they knew how to do it, right? Through travel agencies and brochures and personal advice. And there was this paradigm of being a logistics company, a production line, what is left and right doesn't interest us. Interest us. Now that was the culture of Crony. Pride, in 2006, that was the website of Crony, and they were approached by Priceline. Priceline just recently bought Active Hotels and Booking.com. And they offered Crony a deal to merge as equals. Both Crony and Priceline were valued at $2.2 billion, so they were actually equals. But Priceline was 700 people and a couple of websites. Crony was 12,000 people. So that was by no means something that was even they would, something they would discuss. Now, of course, at some point it became evident, and that's when I joined. So I'm part of the rescue attempts chapter, which lasted basically from mid-2000s until the end. And I'll quickly give you some insights of what we did. Like, obviously, when you're a manager, you hire a new consultant if you've got a problem, and we fused them all. And consultants do new strategies. In other words, they produce PowerPoints. And um, those uh, values were outdated, so you produce new values on PowerPoints. And you produce a new branding to change things on PowerPoints and the rest of the surface. So you look different, but in the inside you still do the same thing. You can digitize and automate. We had a new core IT system. Computer says no. That didn't work. When nothing works, you exchange management and you reorganize, and you can do so every year again. If nothing happens and nothing helps, you do sales. You lower prices and you go out and you do that every season of the year. If this happens to you, you know you're doomed. Then you're starting to cut cost, right? Means you fire people, which you can do every year again. And at some point it felt that crony as if the lemon was not only squeezed out, but dried out and the pits were falling out. You can do agile experiments, right? That's how you develop startups. You can do open innovation. We had a future lab. We were quoted by the Harvard Business Review as a particularly future for our company. We did M&A. And until lastly, we did the one big thing we bought GTA for 720 whopping million dollars in an attempt to actually now become a digital technology company. Only we didn't. So that and some other transformational efforts that we're all seeing these days in other companies were basically all in vain. Now what's the moral of the story? If all these things go wrong, this is a systemic failure. Everything collapses at the same time, which is what I call a clusterfuck. And if that happens, the people on the bridge are to blame, always. It's their fault, so it's a governance and leadership failure. But wait a minute, it's not so easy. Let's compare Crony to Booking, because they almost shared fate, but didn't. So let's look what... And Booking went through the roof, becoming the de facto platform for travel worldwide. The difference between the two companies is striking behind the surface. So Booking does not have a digital strategy such as Quoni had, many of them. It is a purely digital company in everything they do. And with that, I mean Booking was digital in the sense it had um, a culture that was uh, outward, uh, forward, customer-driven, long-term. It was data-driven about learning, reinventing yourself, and humble. I've met the CEO, a humble guy, what I call undigital, just to contrast this now, the culture at Quoni and basically every other corporate out there, which is sales and cost-driven, short-term goals and results, top-down decision-making, maintaining status quo, and having narcissist managers building their empires. 
Now, if you actually want to do what you call digital transformation, it would mean to go from left to right. And this is exactly why it didn't happen. Not at Crony, and I would claim at many other companies it cannot happen neither. It's just too big a gap to bridge. Now, this is what we do at Striber. We are Europe's largest independent uh, corporate venture builder. We've built dozens of startups already. And that basically means we put small boats into the water, and guess what? Many of them fail. And that's just normal. It's part of startup life. Now, look at the big ships. It's not the Titanic, but it's the other big ships out there, right? They try to do these kinds of things too, and they throw startups into the water only to go down, and then they say, it didn't work, I've always told you so, right? So that's not working out. What can work out is to build a speedboat fleet, but don't do it as naively as pictured here and some examples from the Swiss market. You need to do it strategically. You put, need to put your bets into line. You need to have the philosophy of a venture capitalist behind, and then you have to draw these lines, and that's the most important thing that I want to convey to the corporates the audience now, you cannot do this on board. You have to separate these worlds. It's a different thing in everything. This is, for instance, what we built uh, together with Migro, which is Sparrow Ventures. We've created this kind of environment where actually startups can flourish. And guess what? Sparrow Ventures fail as well. And that's going to be a subject of one of the next startup uh, Far Cup nights uh, as well. Now, if you pass time, or eventually the big ships will uh, lose in importance and the, the new ones start to gain. And Quoni provided the best example. Quoni created the biggest company that facilitates visa in the world. If you want to go to the US and need a visa, if you want to go to Saudi Arabia, every Muslim going on the Hajj visiting Mecca passes money into Quoni's pockets. But it was not enough. Quoni should have done more than that. So my lessons for large companies are, if you look at diversification, most companies do not diversify just as Quoni did, which makes me giving a pretty dire forecast to most uh, of those companies. And that's a study we've just recently completed, looking at over 1,800 companies over 10 years' time. They all try, two-thirds don't succeed. The ones that do succeed best, the ones that have more than 50% of new revenue after 10 years, those are the ones that outperform the rest. So diversification, in fact, and as a matter uh, of uh, financial return, is a superior strategy. It works. So now you say, what is this guy talking about large companies? But I tell you, there is a lesson for the entrepreneurs uh, just after that. First, transformation is a myth, don't try. Do diversify. That is true innovation. It means building new business. It doesn't mean put PowerPoints on a wall. Speed boats don't tie them to the Titanic because boats sink, even the Titanic and even the speed boat. So you have to build a fleet, prepare for it, and build a portfolio instead. Now you entrepreneurs think, OK, I'm different, right? Wait a moment. First lesson, be humble, because most of you will fail. So statistically speaking, you are on a suicide mission. And uh, this was just like something people say. We've investigated, and it holds true. 89% of companies are not around seven years after they founded. That's data for Europe. Some of them are still somewhat alive, but most of them are either dead or just uh, shell companies. And only 11 we would consider a success, meaning they have either made an exit or are scaling up towards an exit. So what are my lessons for you entrepreneurs? And uh, we've built and failed many startups First one, speed up. That's the only thing you have in advantage against those Titanics and the dinosaur. And there is a quote by Mario Andretti, if everything seems under control, you're not going fast enough. Take that as your motto. Measure what matters. Figures are your friend. Go maniacally after your North Stars. Measure what you do. And lastly, don't be stupid. And with that, I mean, Learn from the mistakes of others. You won't live long enough to make all the mistakes yourself, and only then do your own fuck-ups. Thank you. My name is Jan, and I'm still fucking things up.